victory, intimacy will be demonstrated by your desire. In Exodus 33 verse number 11 is one of the interesting lines you'll read in a long time. He says, so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend and he would return to the camp. Notice, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. <laughs> that the rising of Joshua was not coincidental. Joshua being appointed to replace Moses. It is not something that God is doing out of desperation, no. By this time, Joshua now, by the time Joshua is being handed over. You see, we, we, we read when Bishop was here, and we were reading the book of Joshua, and we realized that by the time, you know, Caleb is asking for another mountain, he was 83 years of age. And we know Caleb and Joshua, these two, you know, Caleb, uh, Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephne, they were almost age mates, we know. Because they were the only ones that were 20 years and above when they left. The land of Egypt. So by the time they have spent, you know, 40 years, so minimally, they were 60 years when they got into the land of Canaan. But we know they were not exactly 20, they were older. So by the time they have come to the land of Canaan, we know that Caleb was 80 years. So by the time Joshua is speaking up the mantle from Moses, we can assume he was right around 80 years of age. But the Bible tells us that from when he was a young man, there is a desire that is seen in Joshua that would demonstrate and communicate that this man had intimacy with God. It was not needed of him. It was not required of him that when Moses goes to the tabernacle, he goes. That one he could go because he was serving Moses. But it was not required of him that after Moses leaves, he remains. But because of intimacy, when Moses would leave the tabernacle to go back to the tents where the people were, Joshua, the son of, of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Okay. So let's say we have a Kesha this Friday. Let's say on Sunday we are coming in at five for prayer. Let's say that on Monday, because it's a Monday, uh, we'll come in at 6 p.m. for prayers up to 9 p.m. It's not just here. It's everywhere. Nobody will come. Why? That intimate relationship that springs out of a desire to know God is not with us. Now, understand, there, there will be no one time that you are not yielded to a particular spirit. Let me say this thing and we go home. Uh, because now if we start digesting this now, it will take us more time. So let me say it in a way we can understand. Now, uh, I will say this with a lot of respect for every one of us here. When you find yourself, when I find myself attracted to movies, it's not the movies. It's not a movie. It's the spirit behind that movie. Okay. okay. When we find... In Romans 6, verse number 16. Romans 6, verse number 16. It says, Do you not know that to whoever you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey? There is no way you will obey that you can commit three hours to watch one movie where all they are doing is killing each other, lying to one another, stealing from one another, have a conspiracy among us, one another, a Christian, that's what we are watching, stealing their best friend's wife, that's the schooling we are in right now. What we need to understand is not the actor, it's the spirit behind that movie. So the moment we are invited for prayer and we don't respond, to the call for prayer, or the call for worship, or the call for anything in church, or the call for anything in the fellowship, the moment we don't respond, what we are actually communicating is that the spirit behind prayer, we don't obey. We don't obey him. We don't have any desire for him. So it is not, in essence, it's not prayer you don't like. Okay. In Romans 8, verse number 26, Romans 8, verse number 26, he says, but 
Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself, he is the author of intercession. So the moment there are prayers that are made in church every morning, you cannot come. It's not because you're busy. Please, look at yourself. See how busy has made you rich. That's irony. Satire. <laughs> it's not because we are busy. No. It is the spirit that attracts men to prayer that we disregard. Amen. Joshua, he was not needed to remain in the tabernacle after Moses has left. What are you doing? And Moses has left. But there was a desire in him. I want to know this God. There was a desire in him. This God that speaks to Moses face to face. But adventure Moses is not here. Maybe he will speak to me. And maybe we do not know. Because in, in the days of Daniel, when the angel speaks to him, the people that were with him, they realized there was an encounter here, but they didn't hear the voice. In Acts chapter number 9, when Saul is hit by a light, the people knew there's an encounter here, but they did not hear the voice. So maybe we do not know. Maybe when God will speak to Moses, you know, you know audibly, like a man speaks to his friend, maybe Joshua would hear that voice. But it was not directed to him. But intimacy kept him in that tabernacle. Look at us. You really want to function in the worship team, but you don't want to remain in the tabernacle. You want to start a church, but you don't want to remain in the tabernacle. You, you, don't, you don't have the desire, and you don't have the capacity to wait. Just stay. It's not your turn. It's the turn for Moses. But as far as intimacy is concerned, even though I'm not the sitting priest, I'm not the prophet right now, Moses is in charge, but I cannot be chased away from just being there where my rock is. And that's all. If you look at Psalms chapter number 18, verse number 1, quickly please. I even don't know what it is. It says, I will love you, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. Keep reading. This is what I'm looking for, that the Lord is my rock. That Joshua knew this God is God to Moses, is God to me. When Moses leaves, I will stay here. And the way I hear him talk to Moses, maybe, maybe, perhaps, one day, he will stop addressing Moses. He'll address me. Go to Joshua chapter number one, verse number one, verse number two. I love this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. So the, the God that was speaking to Moses, we know that Joshua had to wait for close to 40 years. But there was desire in this man. There was intimacy in Joshua that made him, Moses would go up the mountain. Joshua would go with him. Moses would enter into the tabernacle. Joshua would enter with him. Look at our generation right here. While your pastor is preaching, instead of gleaning what you can glean, taking what you can, you're just sitting there, you're like, one of these days, I'll replace you. Even if not here, I'll start my own church. Go start your own church. Then see if the Lord will speak to you. God was silent on Joshua until Moses exited. When Moses exited, it is God who introduced himself to Joshua. He says, hey, Moses, my own servant, is dead. And he tells Joshua that I'm appointing you now. You're the one that takes the place of Moses. Why do you think that in our generation, there are no mantles that are being passed on? How can mantles be passed and you're fighting them? You cannot usher unless we pay you. You cannot sing unless we put your poster and we put it on the pulpit. We'll be seeing you. We see Jesus. Mantles cannot be passed like this. You cannot be told. You cannot be corrected. You cannot be fathered. You cannot be turned. But Joshua, Moses goes out. He does not fight. He's heard God. He's seen God in the life of Moses. I want to believe with all my heart. Because when Moses would ascend upon the mountain, the Bible would tell us that he would leave Aaron and Hur, not Joshua. Meaning that there is a probability that Joshua was doing the 40 days fast, 40 nights fast. But maybe for him he was eating wild berries. But every time Moses is going, Joshua would go be left at a place. Why? There was intimacy. There was desire to know. So Jesus tells them, the man that comes to me, hears my sayings and practices them. It's like a man. It's like a woman 
that digs his or her own foundation deep until she gets to the rock. How do we dig? We dig through intimacy. We dig through, we, 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 we invest time. We dig by pledging our commitment. We dig by, like Joshua did, having an utmost desire. I must know him. 